live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. What does it take to run a good business? I think many would argue that the number one element in any successful business is communication. Without a good system of communication, you've got nothing. Internally, you need to make sure that everyone is on the same page, understands their roles, their duties, and their responsibilities, and knows what to do if certain scenarios arise and who to turn to. And externally, if you're dealing with potential clients and customers, you especially need to communicate to them, explain what's going on, and see where their head is at. As an example, if a person goes to a restaurant and leaves because it's been half an hour and no one's even taken their order for drinks, let alone a meal, and the reason why that happened was because Waiter A thought that the table was in Waiter B's zone, and Waiter B thought that the table was in Waiter A's zone, that's a major problem. But I bring all of that up because even though you think that this would be common sense, and that if you have a problem, you can do business with someone by just talking with them and flat out asking the appropriate questions, sometimes common sense isn't so common. And man, we saw that right here during the 1999 Las Vegas Bowl. On December 18th, 1999, the Fresno State Bulldogs out of the WAC played the Utah Utes out of the Mountain West Conference in the 8th edition of this game. But what you might not realize is that Utah was never supposed to be in the game, and the Las Vegas Bowl organizers didn't even want Utah necessarily to be playing. Because the Las Vegas Bowl organizers had their eyes set on the crown jewel, known as BYU, and had their eyes set on the other big team in the state of Utah. And the reason that they couldn't get BYU to play in this game? Let's just say I've seen incompetent bowl officials and organizers before. But this one might just take the cake for the dumbest of the bunch, because this is so stupid that I genuinely believe that a random group of 5th graders could have done a better job than the actual bowl organizers did. Because this is the story behind what has to be. In the over 30 year history of the Las Vegas Bowl, the dumbest moment and the dumbest controversy, considering the circumstances in the game's history. Before I talk about the actual incident in question and just how stupid it was, we need some context to understand the team that the Las Vegas Bowl wanted to have play in their game in the first place. Because in 1999, the bowl organizers, able to pick a team out of the Mountain West Conference, had their eyes set on this team right here, the BYU Cougars. It was BYU's first season as a member of the Mountain West, having been members of the WAC the previous year, and it seems as though they were making this first year count going 5-2 and two in conference play, and splitting the conference title with Utah and Colorado State. For much of the season, the Cougars were ranked inside the top 25 of the AP poll, getting as high as number 15 in the middle of November, and it's not hard to see why, considering the fact that they started the season off with an 8-1 record, won their only game against a ranked opponent, a number 23 ranked Colorado State team by 21 points, and they went 2-0 against the Pac-10, defeating California and a very good Washington team that eventually at one point was inside the top 25. BYU was a fun team to watch in 1999, as they had an offense that was just outside the top 40 in all of college football, and a defense that was inside the top 30, and they had some must-see players that made it possible. From Kevin Federick, the quarterback who led the Mountain West in every single category, from completion percentage at 61.3%, to passing yards at 3,554, to passing touchdowns at 25, to passes completed at 277, to passer rating at 138.9, to margin hooks, the wide receiver who led the Mountain West with 60 receptions and 1,067 yards, BYU was a fun team to watch, and it was very clear that the Cougars were going to be going bowling somewhere when the time came at the end of the season. Plus, if there's one thing that bringing BYU to your bowl game does for you, it's that they bring over a large and dedicated fan base that will fill the seats, which is big for any bowl game, let alone the Las Vegas Bowl. Let's just take a look at BYU's last three bowl games to illustrate this. In 1998, BYU played Tulane in the Liberty Bowl. The game drew a crowd of 52,192, which was the highest attendance at the game since 1991, and was nearly double what the game drew four years before in 1994. As a side note, 
To learn more about the history of the Liberty Bowl, click the card in the upper right corner. During the 1996 season, BYU played Kansas State in the 1997 Cotton Bowl. The game drew a crowd of 71,928, which was the highest attendance for the game since 1992. That was an increase of over 13,000 fans from the previous year between Colorado and Oregon. I talked about that Cotton Bowl in a previous video of mine, so if you want to learn more about that installment of the game, click the card in the upper right corner. And in 1994, BYU played at the Copper Bowl against Oklahoma. The game drew a crowd of 45,122, which was the second highest attendance in the history of that bowl game at the time. You get the idea. If you bring BYU to your bowl game, the fans will come. And for all of these aforementioned reasons, Las Vegas Bowl officials wanted to bring BYU to their game in 1999. The Las Vegas Bowl had been struggling badly with attendance. Sam Boyd Stadium, where the game was played, held somewhere in the ballpark of 40,000 people at maximum capacity. And in the seven years that the game was played, the highest attendance, which came in 1997 when Oregon played Air Force, was just 21,514 fans. So in the absolute best case scenario thus far, the stadium was half full and was a sea of red seats. Get BYU, and you're not going to have this problem at all. And the good news for the Las Vegas Bowl organizers was that this feeling was completely mutual. Not only did they want BYU, but BYU wanted to play in Vegas. It's a game they never played in before. From a city perspective, it's one of the best destinations for a bowl game. You're not spending too much on travel, and there's a large Mormon population in Southern Nevada. BYU Athletic Director Val Hale even flew out to Vegas for the purpose of meeting up with Las Vegas Bowl officials and pitching his Cougars to play in the game. Hale sounded pretty confident that BYU would not get passed up for the Las Vegas Bowl, talking about it like Vegas was number one on their priority list, and they expected the Vegas deal to be all but a formality. However, when the time came, BYU wasn't invited to play in Vegas, and instead was passed up in favor of Utah, with BYU accepting an invitation to go all the way to Detroit and play in the third year bowl game known as the Motor City Bowl where they would be playing Marshall. That seemed rather bizarre, didn't it? How did BYU, considering everything that I just said, not only not play in the Las Vegas Bowl, but get passed up in favor of Utah? How did BYU wind up playing a game in a city much further away and much more expensive, where they don't have as strong of an alumni base as they do in Vegas? Well, prepare yourselves for this because what we learned was that the people running the Las Vegas Bowl were absolute idiots. Have you ever watched a rom-com where at the end of the second act, the woman leaves the man because of a misunderstanding, and instead of the man just explaining what happened or communicating, he says absolutely nothing, fumbles over his words, and says, I can explain, or it's not what you think, but never does? Of course you have. That's just about every single rom-com. Yeah. This is the real-life equivalent in bold terms of that. Here's the rundown. Craig Thompson, the commissioner of the Mountain West Conference, told BYU that they had a Motor City Bowl bid waiting for them if they wanted it, and had it all but locked up, since Motor City Bowl officials really wanted them. The Las Vegas Bowl, not realizing that BYU actually had Detroit as their second preference, and not their first preference, which was Vegas, decided to do literally nothing about it. They never sent out an invite to BYU. They never asked them what their situation was. Nothing. They just assumed after those comments by Thompson that BYU was bound for the Motor City Bowl. Because of this, the Las Vegas Bowl officials looked elsewhere, forgot about BYU, and they got Utah instead. However, as it turned out, at the time that the Las Vegas Bowl officials got Utah confirmed for the game, the Motor City Bowl officials never even invited BYU to their game yet. Forget about BYU accepting the invitation. They never even got the invite. So you had Las Vegas Bowl officials who didn't even bother to invite BYU because they thought they were locked to go to the Motor City Bowl, even though Vegas was the school's number one choice and the Motor City Bowl hadn't even extended the invitation to them yet. It's like when you have a crush and you want to have them at your birthday party. 
and your crush is actively talking to you about how excited she is for your birthday, but you don't invite them because you think they have other plans that day. Talk about fumbling the bag big time. Now, all of this could have been cleared up very easily if Las Vegas Bowl officials did this incredibly bizarre concept. I know I'm speaking from hindsight here, and I'm not sure if the technology existed for this in 1999, but what if the Las Vegas Bowl officials, you know, just call BYU and ask them? How hard would that have been? Just say, hey, we want you to play in our game, and if you haven't accepted a bowl invite yet, we'd love to have you come out to Vegas. Then, BYU would have either said yes, since Vegas was their number one choice, or they would have declined and said they were committed to the Motor City Bowl. But at least you have your answer. Would that have been so hard? One phone call? One 30 second phone call? How difficult would that have been? But the Las Vegas Bowl officials couldn't even be bothered to do that, leaving them to pick Utah and leaving BYU to feel snub. And it gets even crazier because a member of the Daily Herald, a newspaper in Utah, contacted the Las Vegas Bowl and said that the Motor City Bowl had not officially invited BYU yet, so you didn't need to rush to judgment on Utah. Now, you think that when a newspaper calls you up for a story and breaks this information, as a bowl official, you would say something like, we wanted Utah over BYU since the Utes won the head-to-head, -head. or we're excited to have Utah in the game, or we had preliminary discussions with BYU, but they didn't go much further than that. You wouldn't say, upon hearing the news, you've got to be kidding me. If we had known that yesterday, it would have absolutely swung the vote. So let me get this straight. You wanted BYU so badly that you're angry that you couldn't get them and lost them out to Detroit, even though Detroit hadn't extended an invite yet, and you did literally nothing about it? Again, literally a quick phone call to figure out where things stood, and all of this gets avoided and you get your Cougars to play in the game. It's not a hard concept. And the fact that the Bull officials said that this would have changed everything if they had known that, as if this was some top secret information that needed some investigative work to even assume was true, is absurd. How can you have officials running a multi-million dollar bowl game that are this inept and are this bad at their jobs? Seriously, this was a problem that was entirely your own doing and was entirely your own fault, because you couldn't take 30 seconds to make one phone call, and now you've got no one to blame but yourselves. I guess it worked out for the Las Vegas Bowl in the end, seeing as the Utah Fresno State game drew a crowd of over 28,000 fans, which set a record at the time, and the game turned out to be a great contest, with Utah winning by one point, taking it 17-16. But the fact that they couldn't get this team right here hurt them, especially now that we have the benefit of hindsight. Eight times in the history of the Las Vegas Bowl, the game drew a crowd of over 40,000 spectators. Seven of those times, BYU was playing in the game. And all seven times that BYU has played in Vegas, the game drew that crowd. So yeah, the Las Vegas Bowl left a ton of money on the table in 1999 by having incompetent officials who couldn't be bothered to make one singular phone call and do their jobs. And I feel like the best way to end this video is to end it with a quote from sportscaster Dave McCann, who said on the incompetence of the Las Vegas Bowl organizers snubbing BYU for no reason, it's like a team needed a three-point play to win the game and settled for an uncontested layup and lost. BYU was just waiting to come and was left wanting. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.